steal passwords from a locked PC, 911 is still vulnerable to hacks, and Chrome calls out non-secure sites. All that coming up now on ThreatWire. Greetings, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for September 13, 2016, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Make sure to subscribe to our YouTube channel to get these shows before anyone else, and check out our Patreon to see how you can help the show grow. Patreon.com slash ThreatWire is the place for that. On to the news. In a research paper posted by Ben Gurion University researchers on Friday, a study shows that hackers could successfully DDoS the 911 emergency system due to its implementation of immediate routing for 911 calls. The FCC requires that all emergency calls be routed to the service immediately regardless of the caller's IMSI or IMEI identifiers. The attack would disable the service for several days using just 6,000 malware-infected smartphones in something known as a telephony denial of service or a TDOS attack. Calls could continuously come into 911 from these infected phones while hiding the IMSI and IMEI so that the emergency service can't pinpoint and block the attackers. Since 911 emergency systems are run on the state or the local level, just 200,000 bots would be needed to take out the entire U.S. system of service. The 911 infrastructure is an older analog fashion network, and to mitigate this kind of attack, the government would need to invest time and money into transferring it to a managed IP network for telecommunications. Less than half a minute of access, a $50 device and a bit of code is all you need to steal hash logging credentials from a locked PC or a Mac. In an article written by Rob Fuller, aka Mubix, who is a elite friend of Hack5, host of Metasploit Minute on the same channel as this, and principal security engineer at R5 Industries, he describes how easy it is to pilfer logging credentials from a list of operating systems by using a Hack5 LAN turtle or a USB armory device in a module called Responder. Mubix used these devices and Responder together to trick the target computer into thinking they were a DHCP server on a default gateway, which the computer automatically trusts as it's on the same local network. The target then routes the traffic to the LAN turtle or the armory, then Responder asks for authentication for various services. Since the device is trusted, authentication is relayed to the device. This authentication also serves up the username and a hashed version of the target machine's password in NTLM version 1 or version 2. Now, while the passwords are hashed, they are not salted and they can be used to mitigate other attacks after being stolen. To mitigate this attack, Mubix recommends reading an article on exploitmonday.com, which we will link below, and he also is working on preventative measures. The attack has not been tested on Linux as of this episode recording, and it does work on locked computers, not logged off computers. Google Chrome will update to version 56 in January of 2017, and with that comes a new security feature. The browser will now notify you if a site you visit does not secure your passwords or credit card information securely. In a blog posted on September 8th by the Chrome team, the new notification will display the words not secure as opposed to the current format of just a neutral icon indicator. Eventually, Google will warn Chrome users that all HTTP sites are not secure, not just the ones that have passwords or credit card form fields. Thanks again to all the fine people who contribute to patreon.com slash threatwire. You guys are the reason that we can keep bringing you news every single week. We really, really appreciate it. Any little bit helps us to keep on growing the show. In return, I want to build an RSS feed for you so you can actually download the show instead of just watching it on YouTube. And I'm hoping to bring another episode on per week. So we're getting there and I would love it if you guys could contribute. We might even feature your adorable fur baby in an episode, so check out the perk levels on patreon.com and thanks again for helping us keep this coming completely independent and completely ad free and of course if you cannot donate you can hit the subscribe button you can share this episode on your favorite social media page and use the hashtag threatwire because yes i do check those and i'll be sure to check them out and hopefully even retweet them from you guys and with that i am shannon morris and i will see you on the internet